Hey YouTube, so in this video, we're going to be going through all my chainsaws and cleaning them up, getting them prepared for a job tomorrow. Stay tuned. Let's see. These are the teeth right here that go into the bar. So you see here, this is the tooth that goes inside here and it spins just like every single one of them but what happens is it comes off and you see there almost bends it right so when it bends it it doesn't want to go back in because these are specifically tuned to like really fit in there a specific way certain chains won't fit in there if they don't have the right diameter uh, depth sorry of tooth there's some that are thicker, longer, there's some that are a lot shorter, but for these ones, these are the size. But what happens, it pop, pops off, here, let's go ahead and put it on there. Boom. Pops off your chainsaw, so you have it on, let's see here, boom, boom. You have it on, you're sawing away, it pops off. Boom, you try to get it back on, and it's doing this. It's not going on. It's not doing it. It won't do it because it just it messed up that tip, and the tooth won't go in there. So you have to buy a whole new chain or file this down for 20, 30 minutes to where you can get it in there. But that's why I always, um, too, if you're using your chainsaw um, too tight, it could be detrimental so always keep your chainsaw a little loose so that um, there's play in it when it does like if it does pop off it's not so tight to where it'll like bind and pinch off it'll kind of just roll out and it'll save you from having to buy a new chainsaw or sit there for 20 30 minutes I might as well just put new ones on all of them, to be honest. Just save these for extra. Oh, actually, you know what? I didn't get a new 16-inch chain, so that's what this is. Let's see here, where we leave off. As you can see, I have major ADHD and I cannot focus so that's why I'm out cutting lawns and grass and trees and everything and not in an office telling you what to spend your money on or how to do your job or anything of that sort I'm outside every day cutting lawns cutting trees doing landscapes Outside, nice little clean up. By the, by the uh, screws, that way you don't get you know dirt in your screws while you're screwing them. And they get caked on there, hard to get off. Strip it, etc., etc. So we're pretty clean now. Well, this one is for the 16-inch bar, as there's no uh, brake guard. Or break, chain break. Right, so we got two more. We'll go with the more dirty one first. Let's give it all a nice little clean up. Now, to be honest with you. I'm not the one to go through all my equipment every single time I use it um, and clean it up. I, let me take that back. I'm not the one to clean it up after I'm done with the job. <laughs> I clean it up before the next job, which is not good, but that's where I uh, come in lazy. 
people are always like, oh man, I hate lazy people. If we didn't have lazy people, we wouldn't have any of the big equipment that we have. We wouldn't have any of the, like, uh, efficient things in life. Like, for instance, when you're climbing a rope here, for tree climbing. Back in the day, they used to tie just a Blake's hitch, which is you wrap it around four times, you go underneath the second one and tighten it up, and you basically pull yourself up. So you, you jimmy up a tree, and you lift yourself up and pull it, and it tightens it up for you, and you keep going up and up and up. So nowadays they actually have um, things called... Um, a zigzag or um, mechanical mechanical things so they're just basically metal pieces that make your climbing so much more efficient right but here's the thing if you don't know how to tie a Blake's uh, Blake's hitch and one of your mechanicals uh, goes out breaks or malfunctions somehow how are you gonna get out of that tree so it's kind of one of those deals As you can see, I kind of have quite a bit of a, an obsession with uh, steel equipment. That's pretty much all I run, besides the Xmark mower that I have, and some. I have a few chainsaws that aren't uh, steel. I have a Echo and a 22-inch Makita, but I do prefer the steel equipment. It's just the most uh, versatile, the most powerful, and uh, it just gets the job done better than any other pieces of equipment that I've ever run. I've run quite a bit, Red Max, um, Echo, um, can't think off the top of my head, Shandawa, um, Husqvarna, um, yeah, all of them that I've used, that I just found that steel was just like the most uh, efficient for what I do. Now, I will say Echo um, was like my second favorite and the only reason the Echo was nice was because I was maintaining yards. If I had been cutting something really thick, I would go more so towards the steel equipment um, than anything else. Um, but if it's just maintenance and you're just going through a lawn that you cut last week or maybe two weeks ago, um, you don't need something so powerful, but um, I still prefer it. I use my steel equipment uh, on the lightest stuff, but I just quarter throttle it or even less, I just feather it, and it seems to get the job done regardless. Now, if you want to get through something thick, you know, say you want to you know, hit a fence line or something, it's thick full of vines, just like this over here. See that? You know, like, get that stuff. If you wanted to get that stuff, I would say go for the steel equipment. Um, the Echo is just not cutting through that for some reason. Now, I know they probably have some pieces of, like, weed eaters that are uh, Echo that are more powerful, but it comes with a big price tag compared to the steel. And I just noticed the steel, the only thing that goes wrong with them is, like, you have to change the air filter and you know the primer bulb maybe once every two three years if that um the bar like for the chainsaw specifically the bars last forever unless you don't know how to use them um in that case it's not the equipment's fault it's more so the um handler or the person behind the equipment but they last a very long time. The only thing that goes wrong with them is end up the paint kind of wears off. You can kind of see in this one, this is my older chainsaw steel, and it's got the paint wore off a little bit. And aside from that, it doesn't warp. It doesn't, uh, doesn't do anything exceptionally crazy. Um, yeah, so that's why I prefer the steel equipment over uh, anything else, and I just had 
the best experience. Now another thing is I did get lucky and come across one of the best steel uh, ser um, uh, repair servicemen, whatever you want to say, someone who services steel equipment. Uh, he worked for Ace Hardware um, and he used to take care of all of my equipment because it's pretty much all steel, but he would work on other things if I had to bring it to him. Um, God rest his soul, he actually passed away um, in 2020 uh, due to the coronavirus. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's one thing about the equipment. Yeah, that sucks, but honestly, that guy meant a lot to me, even though we weren't like friends like that. I was more so just a business thing. Um, I still keep that guy near and dear to my heart. Um, his name was John. He worked for Ace Hardware in Tarpon Springs, Florida. Um, very good guy. Worked his whole life, and he was just about to uh, come into retirement. <laughs> uh, he had maybe a month or two left um, working at Ace Hardware, and he passed away. It was, I believe it was from a heart attack, but it was caused from the coronavirus. It was just other complications involved. The man was so healthy. It just blows my mind. But God rest his soul. Um, a new young fellow came in and is taking care of all my steel equipment. I've had no issues with him, so that's good. Um, it's unfortunate about John, but may he always live in my memory all right so let's kick it off first of all i'm gonna go through and you see all this gunk on here i'm gonna get it all taken off take off the bolt get this all taken off that way it's all exposed and we can start cleaning it Now most steel equipment that you buy, it comes with the T-wrench that you need for the bolt. Um, sometimes they come with the star thing instead of the flathead, which you need for inside here. There's a little flathead piece that it's just a tensioner and it pulls back the bar and pushes it forward so that it tightens the chain. So we're going to go ahead and get this off. That's almost like I did that last time. So I'm going to give it a little loosen, lefty loosey, righty tighty. This bolt does not come off of this. Um, or protector, whatever you want to call this, guard, chain guard. So you go ahead and get that off. And in order to get this completely off, you have to pull back, pull it off. So look how dirty the inside of that is. Get all that cleaned up. that is. Granted this chain is pretty good. I'm going to keep this one on here. I think I'm going to change this one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm changing that one. And this time I got the aggressive chain. Loosen the tensioner pulley here just a little bit. Lefty loosey, righty tidy. 
The only thing you're going to come into um, a problem with the lefty loosey righty tidy is anything that sp uh, spins um, clockwise because then the bolt will automatically loosen on its own. So, machine is not totally toast. Um, it's just not not sharp and not the way that I want it for this job. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually save this chain and then I'm actually going to clean it up and sharpen it. That way I have an extra one whenever I need it. Chains tend to get tangled up. Once you learn how like the chain works and why it tangles up, it becomes very easy. So you see how it's like all tangled up? Most times you come out of the package it's all like that. But if you just take from two points, one loop here, one loop there, and then you watch it fall through. See? There's sometimes there's like more than one. It's it's looped this way, and then back around that way. Let's see here. Let's see. So just take one one part of it. Both sides of the loop. Boom. So, aside from the fact that the aggressive chain is just... Uh, it's bigger. It's just thicker. A thicker chain, bigger, bigger teeth. Um, you can see these ones are kind of small. These ones are really thick. And dive into... Uh, it's just for better cutting, thicker cutting, send yourself some mulch instead of some sawdust. But also another way to tell the difference is this marker. I don't know if this is for just steel or if it goes for Oregon and all these other different brands of chains, but yellow is for aggressive 14 inch chain and then green is for the standard. So. Oh, and by the way, this here is a MS-170 steel, just a standard little uh, two-hand ground saw. This one here is the MS-194T, it's my newer one. Uh, I bought this about a year, actually probably going on two or three years now, actually, crazy. Um, and then this one here is a 193T, which I bought this one maybe five or six years ago and it still runs great that's why I love this equipment especially the chainsaws don't get me wrong Echo makes a great chainsaw too but I don't know do they have the same competitions that steel has every single year I don't know alright I'm losing it alright so let's get this off these ones actually come off the whole bolt, which sucks because I'm the type of person to lose them. So let's see how nasty that looks on the inside. Oh yeah, she needs clean bad. This one's a little different though. The tensioner pulley, or tensioner, whatever you want to call it, is here. So, a little different. And, uh, this chain is good. Just need to clean it, sharpen it. I'm going to go through and just clean the bars off, clean the chainsaw off, clean the inside of here off. May scrape it up a little. Try to do this last week. I'm not looking for like the most clean chainsaw you've ever seen in your life. I'm just getting this stuff off of here. Okay, I don't care. Oil on it, whatever's on it's got. The majority of the gun will be cleaned off. 
Now we have nothing to give us a hard time to prove uh, the material that we're cutting into. I don't know if so long this, but that screws off all this nasty crap on the inside here. I can take up. Probably should put some gloves on. But. I'm not going to. I actually did buy this bar about a month ago, and I only used it once. Because I ended up using my old chainsaw. I prefer to use older equipment than just keep newer stuff up. I know it's kind of like. Not how most people want to do it, but. I said I'm not looking for perfect, just trying to get the gunk off. There's gonna be some nooks and crannies that you're not gonna be able to get, and that's where a flathead comes in handy. So I just take my flathead and look right here. This is where your oil comes out and greases your bar. See that right there? Let me get it up in there. That right there is where your oil comes out. So if you got stuff in there like that right there, so that little piece in there, it's gonna stop it up. So and very important. See, I blew it out. Now it's clean. Now the oil can go in here, and then lubricate the bar or the chain as it goes through. Because as you see, chain goes here, and then literally goes right there, right over that. So, in here. I think the thing to do again on this has some check. It's like, you're it's like very low out, so it's very, very low. What I'll do is once I off, I'll uh, so the last one here. I'll uh, start it up and that way like spin this all vibrate it and the little pieces are starting to come out. That's it. So that one's clean, so for this one. Again. Now it's done. You get that like nice compressor and high powered kind of like dust air duster, you know? I wouldn't blow all this stuff out really nice, but I'm not quite there yet. I'm too tired on this one. It's just expensive right now. I'm going to go my toilet paper. I think that's enough to be for me at least. And now my wife, she's done with that shit. She's done with it. So now I got a nice one. Dust it off. Go through again, same thing here with that bar. Oil dispenser. Get that out of there. Oh, that's a little chunk out of there. As you can see, they really didn't change much on these chainsaws throughout the years, even. Because they didn't make bad chainsaws. <laughs> Usually you see things get way better, maybe way worse. These things just stay the same, and that's the kind of old school way I like. Let's give this a little start. Stuff out of there. Done and done. Now this guy. Let's see here. Have fun tomorrow, man. It's gonna be some killer fun. Hopefully not. Hopefully not killer fun. Hopefully it's just fun. I don't like killer fun, that's, that sounds dangerous. I want everybody to see the steel MS-170. No, just kidding. I'm very proud of my equipment, so I do come off kind of braggadocious sometimes, but I'm just very proud of the fact that I actually was able to 
accumulate all this stuff because I remember a day when I had absolutely no equipment and I was renting it from Home Depot every single day and it was costing me more money to rent this equipment than I was actually making so it was very pitiful but you only do that for so long until you just learn that you know you're worth a lot more you know you gotta like charge more at the time I wasn't charging enough anyways and then renting equipment then I went through the phase where I just started charging the customers the, the rental price but even then they were still getting upset oh why am I paying for this I can just go find it from another company and they already have it and this that and the other but the biggest thing is just uh, continue to work through all the bullshit and then one day you'll be able to have all, all the things that you ever wanted. I'm not saying I have everything I ever wanted, but um, I'm definitely blessed with all the things that I do have and I don't take it for granted. I appreciate it all every day. Um, it's kind of why I'm doing this now, just to show my appreciation for my equipment. I could run this stuff into the ground. It's the only thing that keeps me alive and with a paycheck. So, kind of like your guys' jobs, if you guys work at a job, you guys should really start taking it, like being more appreciative. So, oh, I don't make enough money. Well, I understand that. Because I was there, I worked for somebody. I worked for somebody doing this for bare minimum wage and sometimes even less. I didn't need the money then, but I need it now in order to live, so prices had to go up. Quality goes up with it. Not like we're getting shittier by the day. Customers understand once they see the finished job. The ones that don't understand, well, they just end up going with a different company, sometimes they'll pay a cheaper price, that's fine, and then they get a uh, half-ass job, I try to tell them the first times, you know, you just gotta be able to do it right the first time, some of these people just have never done these things, and they're just trying to make a quick buck, some of them just, just seriously don't know what they're doing at all. I mean, in Florida here especially, we got people just giving up their job to cut lawns and stuff. Like, there are people actually doing it for a business. And they'll go out, they'll do things for a quarter of the prices I would charge, of course. They don't have any overhead, they don't have any employees, any workers' compensation, any taxes that they have to pay, because most of the time they're just asking for cash. So. And that hurts um, the, the real businesses out there that are um, that are having to go lower on their prices just to earn a buck. And kind of at the point now where I just uh, I won't work unless I'm getting paid properly. So I gave up that mentality of oh maybe I should do it a little cheaper just to get the job a long, long time ago. A long time ago. I'm not gonna start this one because it gives me some trouble. These guys, and it's the chain protector or case, or whatever you would call it. It's good to keep all this stuff nice and clean. That way, um, nothing gets jammed inside and then uh, takes your chain off the track. Because if your chain gets uh, pushed off the track, and I know most people who know about chainsaws and everything know this, but for those of you who don't, uh, it's very easy to have your chain pop off of your chainsaw, and then when it does that, your chain won't go back on. See, these are the teeth right here. I'll get them close to the video. I wanted to actually do a live video today, but it was my first time ever clicking on that live option button. 
And I thought it was a pretty good idea that they did this because I noticed that uh, people are like live streaming very crazy stuff, right? So it's a good thing that they cut it out to where you have to wait 24 hours in order to uh, live stream. Looks like it's starting to rain a little bit. Let's get this back together. I find it easier to work on them upside down. They kind of have a balance point. Same thing with these guys. It's just easier to work on them upside down. Make sure you put your steel the right way, right side up. Then also make sure you put your chain on the right way because there's absolutely a wrong way to put a chain on. And I'll show you that up close in person. So if you look at the chain, you'll notice those teeth I showed you earlier in the video, and then these teeth. Well, these are actually what cut into your material and chunk away little piece by little piece at a time. So, as you see that little triangle tip there, this is where the wood or material is going to go, and it's going to I almost do it with my skin. You see that? If it was really sharp, it would straight go straight through my finger if I really put some pressure on it, but they're pretty dull at the moment. So this is just going to be my ground saw, cutting up little small pieces to put into the trailer to make it fit. But as you see, that's where the material goes in, and it slices it, and then it comes out this side, underneath, and then out of this part of your saw. So go around. So there's a direction in which this chain specifically turns. And if you see it, which way would you think, right? Obviously, if it's spinning this way, it's going the right way. See if I'm spinning this way, whoosh, boom, that's good. But if I was spinning this way backwards, it would not cut nothing. So grab your bar and we are experiencing a little bit of rain. So I may take this into the trailer, but I am under a huge tree, so it's kind of nice. All right, so got my chain on there, and I got it on there the right way. See, we got steel, and then we got the triangle facing the correct way, our cutting side. So put this on again make sure you put it on the right way obviously a chainsaw is upside down so if I put it on this way it would be the wrong way if I put it on this way we're good so put it around the sprocket and then around your bolts on your tensioner pulley right there and what you want to do is you want to take your flathead that I lost and you want to tighten up your tensioner and this one specifically is right here just to where it's going to hold it on your bar make sure you're not loosening it like me I gotta make sure I'm loosening it because this is upside down too. You gotta keep in mind. So we're backwards here. Yeah, so this is the right way. And as you see, it's starting to tighten up. Make sure it's going in. To, your teeth are going into the bar. Remember, like I said, we don't want it too tight. But for right now, the chain to hold the bar on so we're gonna tighten it pretty tight to where it keeps it on all right so now we add the guard chain guard 
I know I've called it like 13 different things in this video, but it's okay. Now that we got that chain guard on there, we're going to go for them bolts. And oh man, I put them in a specific spot. <laughs> Looky there, I didn't lose them. It's a miracle. And yes, your bolts do have a specific side. I mean, it really doesn't matter, but they do. Give it a good tighten. And also, remember I said don't have the chain too tight. You want to be able to pull it out a little bit. Not all the way. You know, it's got to have some tension on it. It's actually kind of perfect. So, we'll leave it just like that. Go ahead and tighten this on here. Bada boom. Last thing we gotta do, add some bar oil and some gas. We'll be ready tomorrow. Always check gas, there's a little symbol. Gas, and then up here it says oil for your chain. Always look. It takes two seconds to look. Takes $300 to fix it. Borrow a little in there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fill up all these bar oils while I'm sitting here. Have it out. I don't wanna have to touch this stuff more than once. Learn about that. If you can only touch your materials one time on a job, you're saving so much time. To where some people, they'll sit there and touch it two, three, four times. And by that I mean, say you have a pallet of sod, right? You don't want to have that sod delivered to you, pick it up, put it in a wheelbarrow, go 20, 30, 40, 100, 200 feet away, pick it up again, put it on the ground, and then touch it again and move it. So you're, you're touching it three, four times at that point. Whereas if you have them deliver the sod specifically to where you want to lay it, you grab a piece of sod and you drop it on the ground. You grab another one, you drop it next to it and you fill that whole 500 or 420 square foot, depending on the pallet, size of the pallet, in that area, until you got four or five pieces left on that pallet, you pick the pallet up and you put the four or five pieces where the pallet's at. So you're touching it one time, opposed to, like I said, pick it up, put it in a wheelbarrow, take it over there, then pick it up again, put it on the ground, then maneuver it where you want it to go. It's, I've been there, I've done that, so that's just why I say that. because that's where all this stuff's sticking from in the first place, but... Let me get the gas. 
Now, here's a little trick of the trade I've learned. When you go to fill up your chainsaw, do not fill it. Can you fill it? Yeah, absolutely. Why would you not fill it? So whenever I use my chainsaws, I fill the gas up halfway. Or maybe three quarters. Why would you do that? Wouldn't, that, wouldn't you just run out of gas and half the time? Well, that's the point. Most people, they fail to, uh, when they're using their chainsaws, they fail to use the proper amount of bar oil. Your bar oil is gonna protect you from burning up your chain, burning up your bar, um, getting dull. Um, it's, it's just very important uh, to make sure you have the right amount of oil in your chainsaw as you're running it. And if you run a full tank of gas, now some of them might have a big enough uh, reservoir for the oil, but I've learned that most of these steel equipment that I use anyways, and even the Echo that I use, I still use the same method. So I run out of gas, and then I check my oil. So my oil is almost gone. If I had run the full tank of gas, I had run my chain without oil. So, just something to help out. It also help not to do this on the uh, decline. If I was on the opposite side, I wouldn't spill any gas. I'm gonna start getting some stuff in because it's starting to rain. I'm gonna have to get a new one of these. Seems it's uh, had its day. This is my older chainsaw. It's lasted me so long. Six years almost, man. A lot of trees I've cut a Believe it or not, these little chainsaws will cut through even the biggest stumps you've ever seen. Uh, maybe not the biggest ones you've ever seen, but the biggest stumps here in Florida. <laughs> it just takes a lot of time and it will ruin your bar, but it's definitely. Um, possible. So I got my new chains here. Remember I tell you they come sometimes packaged crazy. We're about to find out. Uh, look at that. Oh man, what a mess. Right? How are we going to get that apart? You just got to find out. This part's really difficult. Just like that. Let's see. One, two. It almost got me there. <laughs> almost made me look like a fool. aggressive 14 inch chains I think that pole saw is a 14 inch bar too so hopefully that's the right size and then this is my this is my newer saw you can tell because this one's got a little broken air filter piece, protector, whatever you want to call it. Again, I want to make sure it's going on the right way, so if you put it on this way, it would be the wrong way. Actually, that is the right way. When the steel, because I had it upside down. If it was, this was upside down and it was this way, it would be the wrong way. So I guess that's a good way to look, too. You know, like, if you want to judge it by that, that's that would probably be better, too. Nice. It's going that way, remember? Because we're upside down.
and I hope these chains fit because I remember one time I got these aggressive chains and they didn't fit my chains all for some reason. best to put your bar on first and then your chain. And this is why. <laughs> so let's see here. We gotta get this on or what? Sometimes it's best right now. Take this while you're here. Sorry, let's show you. And loosen it. Why? Because it was uh, tightened to the likes of the other chain and not this one. Again, remember going the right way with the chain. that puppy on in there. Start applying the teeth into the proper holes. Alright, looks like we're still a little bit too tight for this chain. So we're going to loosen her up just a little bit more. Remember, do not, do not loosen these too much because you will not be able to tighten it back up and you'll have to go buy a whole new t-shirt. Really been there, done that, got that t-shirt. Not right. Not right. So we got that on there, now we gotta get a good tightening. Remember, a little bit more tight than you need to be at first so that it stays on. And then give it a little snug loosen. a little better. Nor do you want to tighten it too much either, so keep that in mind as well. So that's perfect right there. That is perfect for me. I will take that all day long. Should have uh, should have separated these probably. They're the same exact thing though, but I honestly can't remember which one went. Oh, okay, I can tell easily there. This is the newer one. So remember, in order to take it off, we had to pull back. It's the same situation putting it back on. So not only do you want to put it on these prongs here. There's one here. There's one here. There's a little clip here, 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 a little clip, here, a little clip there, and then some little points to keep it flush. So, but, boom, you're on, but you may not be connected right here. I am, so boom, got it, and then I'll, boom. All you have to do, tighten her up. Again, make sure she's loose enough for your liking. Good for me. I like that. I might even tighten it just a little bit to be honest with you. Give that a good tighten.
you were to tighten it incredibly, it, like, but enough to where it won't vibrate and loosen back up because it's happened. That's how I've lost a couple of those bolts, to be honest. One more here. Let's put this on here. Steel the right way. On that tensioner pulley. We're gonna loosen it up just like we did the other one. Apologies, my hands were very slippery because they're covered in this oil, this bar oil. Alright, I think it might be loose enough. Make sure we're going on the right way. Point going forward. about these aggressive bar, uh, chains is they're kind of tight. They're, they don't really have too much slack in them, which isn't a bad thing, but they're so annoying. Teeth in and ride it up. And back that way. Get this guy over. Sometimes you go do it like a bike back in the day and just kind of like spin it on itself. So now we're going to loosen the tightness. Sorry. In the bar before you tighten it up. Doesn't matter if it's a little loose up here because when you tighten it up, it'll correct itself. See how that's not on there? tight, but tight enough to where it's not going to vibrate its way back loose again on you. As always, be very careful when you're messing with chainsaws. They're very dangerous and you can really get hurt. Um, I Thank God I've never hurt myself badly out here in the field. Um, when I was a kid, I used to be dangerous and jump across 20 foot deep ditches in Pinellas Park because they run through the whole city um, and uh, swing, uh, climb up the monkey bar swings and run across the top of them and do some crazy stuff but I broke my arms, my hands, my fingers, my toes, anything you could kind of like easily break I broke um, and then I also broke, I literally broke my arm here here and my wrist. It was in three places. My wrist, my forearm, and then up here, I don't know what you would call that, but right up here. I had a cast that went down to here. And a funny story. When I was eight years old, maybe nine, when this happened. I think it was in first grade. 
and uh, I was climbing up when you know when you go on the swing set there's the triangles the two triangles that hold the bar that holds the swing I climbed up to the top like my brothers were doing all the time and showing off and I just said hey, look I can do it too climbed up to the top and I let go with one hand and I said ah, look at me look at me boom I fell down when I landed I tried to catch myself so I broke my wrist and then just the pressure of literally landing I broke my wrist, I broke right here, and then when I came down here, I broke right there. So, I stood up, eight, nine-year-old kid, and I'm like, instantly in tears, crying. The most pain I'd ever felt in my life. I felt like my whole arm was just immovable, even though I was, I felt like I was moving it. I felt like I was moving it up like this, and it wasn't moving at all. And it just had an excruciating pain. And I end up getting up one hand and running home fast as I could. I was at the park at the end of the street. Um, my brothers were there, everybody. I beat my brothers home. I mean, I, it was like adrenaline was rushing through my body. Ran as fast as I could. And I got to the house and my dad was there and I told him I, I broke my arm, I cannot move it, and immediately went to the emergency room. Um, anyways, get back to that story. Um, I was climbing up the monkey bars, fell, landed on, uh, where was I at? Um, that ADHD is kicking my ass right now. Um, Oh, the hot dog story, right? Okay, so listen, we all have been to Home Depot. We all love their hot dogs. Maybe not now because of coronavirus, but before, pre-pandemic, that was like everyone's little snack. But, um, so my grandmother and my mom were walking out of Home Depot. I say, hey, can I, can I get a hot dog, Mom? Sure. Grandma, you mind if we get a hot dog? Yeah, no problem. All right, cool. So we get a hot dog. My grandmother hands me a bag of chips in this hand, because you get a hot dog and chips, and a hot dog in this hand. Granted, my hand is full cast, my arms are full cast, and it's like, and I, and you know, yeah, I could have put the bag of chips down, thinking back, but I was hungry, so I just kept, I was trying to, ah, my best to get the hot dog, and I couldn't. My grandma and mother just laughing their asses off. But I guess the moral of the story is when are we going to get them hot dogs back? Anyways, it looks like we're done. Got the oil in it, the uh, gas in it, new chains on, all cleaned up, ready to work tomorrow. Big job. I told you that already. So I put it up. Basically, these boxes. I put the fuse chains in them. That was before. I found a nice little spot for them. So, this is so pretty. This is so pretty. This box. Here, got three extra blades, which basically. Let's try to clean up. I love your water so much. Please sponsor the man. Water's getting too expensive for me. Need you to sponsor me. Okay. So, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. My family appreciates it. Um, looking to grow this channel as much as possible. And... Um, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe, um, share this video with your friends and family, and then maybe leave some comments and give it a like. It would be uh, 
very helpful. I would be very appreciative. Um, thanks for watching. Enjoy the video. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you on the next one.